This episode of Salmon Cast is sponsored by Wild for Salmon. Wild caught Alaskan seafood direct from our store to your door since 2004. Order now at wildforsalmon.com and use the promo code PODCAST at checkout and you'll get 10% off your first order. That's wildforsalmon.com, promo code PODCAST at checkout. Welcome to Salmon Cast, the podcast about wild adventures fueled by wild seafood. And we're here today. This is episode one of our new podcast. So welcome, listeners. And today we are going to give you just a little bit of an indication as to what you can expect from this weekly podcast, as well as to introduce you to two of our staff members that you'll see regularly in our videos and on the podcast. So before I introduce them, let me tell you a little bit about what this is and what you can expect from it. So we decided to produce a podcast based around our businesses. We have two um, direct-to-consumer seafood brands, Pride of Bristol Bay and Wild for Salmon, that sell wild Alaskan seafood to -to direct-to-your-door. And we thought it would be an additional resource to all of our fans to have a podcast that's based around talking about our products Um, the lifestyle of fishing commercially, as well as what it's like to work for a commercial seafood company and all of the people that we interact with and network with within the outdoor industry and beyond. We're going to have some interesting conversations, um, interesting topical discussions, as well as some great resources and educational pieces for from the seafood aspect. So we encourage you to follow along here on YouTube uh, for the video version, but the audio version will be available wherever you get, wherever you consume your podcasts. So I thought it would be a good introductory episode for me to invite two of our key team members on today and get to know them a little bit before we jump headfirst into um, this venture. So we have Courtney and Aubrey here. Say hi. Hello. Hey. And we're going to talk to them a little bit today about their backgrounds, what they do for the organization, as well as um, what drew them to want to work for um, Curian and get to know a little bit more about them. So we are going to start with Courtney, who is um, one of two longest tenured employees at Curian. And Courtney, tell us what you do here at the company. Yeah, so it'll be four years in April that I've been with Wild for Salmon, uh, and I am the customer service manager and marketing associate. Great. And tell us the backstory as to how you landed yourself here um, initially. Sure. So I grew up just outside of Bloomsburg, uh, so I always knew about Wild for Salmon, but I've also always loved Alaska. So anytime my family would say, oh, you're going to have to work for Wild for Salmon someday, Uh, And when the opportunity came up, it was a no-brainer to apply. Uh, I went to school in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, so still local to the area, and I studied um, environmental science and business. So it was like the perfect fit for me here. Very cool. And what has it? What has uh, kept you here for four years? Mm, Oh, (laughs) the people, definitely. Like just like. Being able to come to work every day and enjoy the people that you work with. There's always something new to learn. Um, It's just like the lifestyle that everyone leads is like really interesting and, you know, definitely makes it more than a job. Interesting. What about the um, the opportunity? Like, what is it that um, that you enjoy about your job specifically within the organization? Yeah. What you do on the day to day. So customer service is definitely where my heart lies. Um, it's, I've done it the whole time that I've been here. Uh, and now like there's so many customers that I talk to all the time and I like, as soon as I see their name on the phone, I'm like, Oh, Hey, it's me. And it's, it's just nice to have those personal relationships and being able to take care of customers. Even if I don't know them that well, or haven't talked to them on the phone before, um, being able to, you know, know that they're going to have a great experience with us. And I am in control of that, making that happen. How often throughout the day do you have a call from someone that you know by name when they call in? Uh, at least once a day. Some days it's wow. more. just depends on the day of the week. But yeah, at least once a day. So they're used to hearing your name 
or your voice when I, they call in. I would say so, yeah. I think there's a little sigh of relief when I pick up the phone for them too, which is nice. How many of them you've actually met in person? Oh, um, oh, maybe, maybe one. Not not many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, tell us a little bit about um yourself and like what what passions you have outside of the workplace that kind of tie into some of the things that our company stands for yeah so um grew up on a hobby farm and my husband and i currently have what we refer to as a hobby farm so um pigs chickens some sheep uh but then that you know growing up that way really connects you to food and makes it that much more important and i'm a hunter myself so naturally fishing hunting wild game all all comes fr- full circle there so um really just the importance of food and then family like the aspect of, uh, you know, incorporating those two and how deeply rooted they are together and the, you know, stories and relationships, but then all coming together at the table for that meal and appreciating where that food came from. Cool. Um, great. Um, Aubrey, switching to you for a few minutes. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, Tell us a little bit about um yourself just a general um get to know you about your background um okay yeah well, well for, I, I, let's start here tell everybody why you're <laughs> on a screen versus with yeah that's, okay that's where i was gonna start with so glad we're uh, on the same page here um so i'm on a screen because i am not in pennsylvania with dustin and courtney i am sitting in my apartment in Washington state on the complete opposite side of the country uh, because I'm the only employee of Curian Fisheries that works on the West Coast. So my days are entirely spent on Zoom or my computer by myself in my apartment. So Sounds thrilling. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about um, your life in the Pacific Northwest prior to uh, working here. Tell us a little bit about your background, what type of uh, jobs that you had before working here. Yeah, totally. So um, I'm a native to Washington. So I grew up here um, in a small town and like about halfway through middle school, like I guess any Pacific Northwest native kind of knows that you get really tired of the gloom. So by the time you hit high school, you're really ready to get out or I mean, I shouldn't speak for everyone that lives here, but uh, I certainly felt that way. So when I graduated high school, I um, moved to Arizona and went to Arizona State for a year. And it was fun, but I ended up really just like not enjoying the environment because when you grow up next to like a coastline and mountains and lakes and rivers, and then all of a sudden, like there's there's just rocks everywhere. It's a little bit different. Um, and I, so I think it took leaving for me to want to come back to the Pacific Northwest and now, um, like I've just never left. So, uh, I moved back to Washington and finished college and, um, ended up getting a job at a brewery in, um, Bellingham and it, which is like this crazy brewery heavy town. Like if anyone knows of Bellingham, they know there's like 20 different breweries there. And so I, uh, got to work for one for the oldest one in town. So it had a ton of history behind it. And I, uh, ended up spending like two and a half. Well, I started there as a host, like during college and then worked my way up into doing events and then doing marketing for them. And so I spent about four years working for them and drinking craft beer and becoming a beer snob, which is great and awful all at the same time, because you don't want to be that person who's a beer snob, but unfortunately. What's the definition of a beer snob in your mind? I think just like, you know, good craft beer when you drink it, like it, like, here's the thing. I like to drink, I feel like I can't say any beer names, so I'm not going to mention any specifics, but you know, like the watered down beers that you can get in the grocery store that you take you know, back in the day to like a house party or something like that. I'm fine with drinking those, but if I'm like going to have a beer and meet someone, I'm going to get like, I'm going to go to a craft brewery when that's locally made and one that has like a nice, 
Like I personally really like hazy IPAs, but I'm very picky about the IBUs. And like, if it doesn't have a good head, I'm probably going to send the beer back and the head is like the foam on top of the beer. So like, that's a craft beer snob in my mind because I'm picky about what I'm drinking. That, that's and I, very, like, that's very snobby. For. We're going to have to take her to New see, York. I know, <laughs> but I'm like, see, I'm turning red because like, I don't, I would you, not consider myself a snob. And well, in, and for future reference, you you can mention beer, specific beer names, only if you think there's above a seventy percent chance they'd want to sponsor the show. <laughs> you can mention their name. Okay, got it. <laughs> um, okay, so, so that's a beer snob. Gotcha. Thank you for defining that. Yeah. Um, so you were in the brewery industry doing marketing. Tell us, how did you go from hoity-toity beers to pre- <laughs> premium wild-caught seafood? Um, yeah, hard shift there for sure. Because, uh, like, I would call myself a beer snob, but I would not call myself a seafood snob, which is just so ironic because I'm working for a wild seafood company. So you would think, but um, – and also growing up in the Pacific Northwest. So – but before I, you continue, though, you is it true you had like just tried sea? Was it just tried seafood like two years ago, or or was it just salmon? So, uh, it's it's complicated. It's murky. But basically, I didn't really have my first bite of like wild Alaskan salmon until about two or three years okay. ago. I thought it was just ge- generally that, seafood. So I thought that well wasn't. before, like I have before that I never ate seafood. Like my family didn't grow up making seafood. Like we did hamburger helper and all that kind of stuff. And I remember like one birthday party in the fifth grade, someone wanted to go get sushi and I couldn't eat anything. Like I, like they made me try the sushi and I was like, how can you eat this? But I didn't want to ruin the birthday party. So I'm pretty sure I like went to the bathroom and just drank a bunch of water and like tried to get it out of my system because I didn't like were, it. Were you, did you eat seafood before you came to work here? Yeah, we were like fish fry type people. So um, okay. like any clam bakes, things like that, we were pretty consistent with. The standard but, yeah. Pennsylvania, like Friday night at the the rec hall, yeah, the yeah. fish fry We have dinners. two vegetarians in our family too, though, like my extended family. Oh, wow. So every holiday we always had some sort of seafood dish. But had you had wild? caught seafood before you came to work here or? um i mean not not specifically called out to me i don't think okay like we were customers of wild for salmon but not uh, i don't know that i ate it just being in my younger years interesting yeah okay all right aubrey so you then uh tell us a little bit more about how you found this place sorry i yeah. interrupted <laughs> no um so I think that it's interesting anyways, though, just because I grew up like on the coast where there's all this like Pacific salmon and great seafood and I didn't have any of it. And then Courtney did, but lives in Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, it's ironic how it works. But um, yeah, so the reason I had my first bite of wild Alaskan salmon about, honestly, it was probably more like, well, yeah, it was like a year in, um, is my boyfriend Christian. So he's a commercial fisherman in Alaska, just like working on the same type of boats that Steve is a captain of. So I got introduced to that industry about four years ago when I met him. And I guess I didn't mention this to you the other day, Dustin, when I was kind of telling you some things, but um, we met at the brewery. So the brewery had like a beer delivery system and Christian is my boyfriend's name and and he was delivering the beers and I was like taking the phone calls and dispatching. So like, that's how we got to know each other. And so I would hear about this place, Bristol Bay. And he's like, oh yeah, like when June hits, I'm going to like quit for the summer because I'm going to go make a ton of money in Alaska. And then, well, I doubt he said like, I'm going to go make a ton of money. (laughs) Not like that. But um, so I just like kept hearing about this place. And I was like, I didn't even know this place existed. Like I just thought the salmon just came from the sound, Puget Sound, you know, whatever. Um, And that the fact that he kept like saying, oh, I'm going to go to Alaska. I was like, wait, like, you live among the bears. And he's like, no, I live on a boat for six weeks and six weeks. And I'm like, that's even cooler. Oh, what? That's so amazing. So, um, like about a, a year or like, I guess it was actually right after his first season, he came home and we kind of started actually dating. Um, cause you know, like we just, we were friends before and then thought each other was pretty cute. And <laughs> then after he came home from the season, we were like, Hey, let's date. 
So, um, all right, let's move on. It was on. like, <laughs> <laughs> she had to decide if she wanted to live that, you know, fisherman wife yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that was a, it. that's Just... a pretty, uh, like, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty interesting that like, so he, I don't know, I haven't met Christian other than just hearing stories, but is he one of the like, he sounds like he's very like commercial fisherman proud. Like, it's interesting, like, because Steve said earlier today on another podcast that like most people can't wait to leave to go home mm -hmm. after the fishing season and like they like leave with the impression that like I'm not coming back to do this next year. Like is he? But it, it, he seems like a big fanboy. No, so he's no? not. It's oh, okay. It's funny you get that impression, but he's actually like he's the same as everyone else. Like when they're done cleaning the boat, he's like, "When when are we flying home? Okay. Like I'm ready to go." So he's he's the same way. Um, I think what's different about Christian and why he's like he's so happy to talk about Bristol Bay is because he really like thinks the fishery is absolutely amazing. Because like the whole other half of his life, when he's not in Alaska he's here like fly fishing all throughout Washington state. So he's like an avid fly fisherman. He started tying his own flies about three years ago. So he ties like most of the flies he's fishing with. And I, like, I can guarantee if I see his car, like leave when I'm on a zoom, he's either going to the river or he's going to the local fly shop to talk about fishing on the river or on a lake or whatever. Like that is his life. I grew up with four brothers. So when people talk about like tough, hard work, I get really excited about it. And I'm like, I want to do it. I'm, I'm tough. I can do this work. <laughs> so I spent like the first two and a half, three years of Christian and I's relationship, just like constantly asking him about Bristol Bay and uh, all of his friends are a part of the industry too. So like basically anytime we were all hanging out, I would be like, wait, so what, what happens in Bristol? I just spent a long time just thinking about how cool the industry was because I'd never known about it, even though I've lived in Washington, like, you know, my whole life minus that one year in the desert. And so, uh, yeah, I just got really obsessed with it and ended up meeting a few other people that were part of the industry. And then, um, the reason that the main question that you asked me that I'm going to bring it back to now, what was that again? The reason that I got connected to wild for salmon and pride of Bristol Bay is, um, I have this, I have a friend named Elma shout out to Elma. Um, and she is a set netter in Bristol and any wild uh, for salmon customers might recognize her name. She did a lot of blog writing for us. Yeah. You can find writing for of hers on our website yep. for sure. Yeah, exactly. So Elma was working for Wild for Salmon and like doing somewhere for Pride of Bristol Bay too, uh, because she's also from the East Coast. So somehow like she got connected with Steve. I don't know. You could probably ask him that question. But anyways, I like got a text from Elma randomly one day and was just like, hey, Aubrey, are you interested in a job? I'm leaving my position, like doing marketing for Pride of Bristol Bay, and they're looking for someone to help with social media and outreach thought of you instantly just chew on it no pressure and I like remember exactly where I was when I got that text because I think it was the first moment where I was like oh my gosh me a part of the Bristol Bay industry what this would be so cool because before that like I was only thinking oh I'll just try and go find an all-female boat to be on but can I handle the work and my job needed to me needed me to be at the brewery during summer because it was the busiest time. So there was no way I was going to be able to leave for like six to eight weeks and then just come back. So it was always like a dream and I never knew how I would be involved. So when someone was like, oh, do you want a job working like along your within the Pride of Bristol Bay industry? And it would be for marketing, which is what I graduated with. I was like, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have, I'll have a conversation. Who, like, who should I talk to? I'm definitely interested. Um, and so Elma set up a couple interviews with this random guy named Steve Curian and like two interviews later, I remember it went really well, both of them. And we hung up and I think I just sat there for a minute because like, I, I don't know, I think Steve wanted to make a formal offer. Or I don't know if he did at the end of the second interview, but it was very clear that he wanted to. So I just remember hanging up at the second interview and being like, holy cow. I'm leaving my job and I'm going to go work for the Bristol Bay industry. I like know this in this moment and I haven't even slept on it or thought about it or anything. 
So, uh, yeah, that was a weird moment in my brain, just sitting there and letting it all sink in. Um, what a buildup. Quit my <laughs> yeah. job yeah. and <laughs> quit it, my job and and took this one. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. Like both of you, like came to this from like a fan standpoint. Yeah, definitely. Like yeah. more so than like um like a job or that you were qualified yeah, for. Yeah. Something out of qualification. Well, I think that's true for a lot of people that work here. I mean, everyone has a very diverse background from brewery to construction to trucking. Truck is that where you worked before? Yep. Trucking. Penske truck truck leasing, you know, the big yellow box trucks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I worked oh, for that yeah. for uh, about two years. I forgot. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, thank you both for sharing a bit about how you landed here. I have a couple of follow-up questions to finish out the episode. I think that are uh, would be fun. Um, first, I'd I'd love to hear what you look forward to most out of this podcast. Ooh, I'm really excited for people to get another look at uh, Stephen Jen's life and the all the inside stories. Um, I am most looking forward to Steve's mom, Kathy, being on the podcast because she is a wonderful lady and hysterical. And she has so many good stories that I think are just really going to like open people's eyes to like Steve being more than the fisherman and, you know, as tough as yeah. he gets out. So, yeah, I'm excited for, to see it's that. It's always an interesting <laughs> experience when someone's mother yeah. gives you their perspective about them. <laughs> Aubrey, what about you? Yeah, I think um, like something similar. I mean, I've never, obviously since I'm here, I've never met Kathy, so I don't, know Kathy, but I'm excited to know Kathy through the podcast. Um, But yeah, I think my similar feelings are just like the world kind of getting to know who Steve is because he's such a character. And like anytime someone meets him for the first time, people are like, oh yeah, like not going to forget that guy. And so I think it'll be interesting for people to see that side of things. And also I'm just really excited about the guests. Like I think I've, um, gone back and forth on what types of podcasts I'm interested in simply because, you know, like, I don't know, it'll be like all like one podcast, but none of the rest. And just based on some of the guests that we've been considering and brainstorming, and I won't name any names. (laughs) uh, I think it's going to be really cool. I'm really excited to hear every episode. So I'm excited to be a fan of the podcast as well as. No, I think it, I think it's going to have a lot of, a lot of different, like all over the spectrum as far as guests go, topics. Um, yeah. That's why it's like, I think that our our tagline to the podcast is so important because it's not just about salmon. It's about way more than that, but still fueled by salmon financially and nutritionally. <laughs> um, okay, so a couple rapid fire questions for the listeners to get to know you a little bit. What is, we'll start with Courtney and we'll go to Aubrey. What's your favorite beverage other than H2O? Oh, tea. I'm a big tea drinker. Not Hot tea or yeah, iced tea? hot tea. Well, iced tea too. I mean, they kind of go hand in hand for me, but definitely like a good black tea with some honey. Cool. Aubrey? I mean, I think the obvious one other than coffee would be beer. <laughs> but, <laughs> I feel like I have to say that. Like, I guess I yeah. don't, I don't drink a ton of it, but like it, it's, it's a part of my past too. And ha- like a good beer after a hard day's work is good. Yeah. Beer is a lot, part of a lot of people's past. <laughs> um, yeah. What is your favorite outdoor activity? Ooh, um, definitely like farming. I don't know how to like, you know, summarize that up, but Every day, uh, my husband and my baby and I, we go out and we have to feed the pigs and the chickens and see everything and get that fresh air. Um, And, you know, it's definitely a labor of love in that aspect of like it's, I think, like four degrees today and we're going to be out there replacing water and feeding the animals and checking in on everybody. So um, definitely my favorite activity, even though it sounds like work. (laughs) Cool. Courtney, do you get up like super early in the morning and then like stay up late to do those things before and after work well so this time of year it's a little weird because it gets dark early but um my husband works third shift so as i'm leaving he's coming home so he takes care of them in the morning 
and then in the evenings I like rush home to do you know get everything done before the sun goes down wow yeah oh, busy so cool. life mm -hmm. Aubrey yeah um I live in the Pacific Northwest so I spend a lot of time doing hiking doing hiking <laughs> I spend a lot of time hiking um, and I also really love um, kayaking and then going with Christian on the river. I'm a pretty amateur fly fisherman, but I finally got some waders this year so I can actually go out on the river. So we've been doing that a bit. So yeah, I think just honestly, like being outside as much as I can since I work inside on a computer all day. Um, but yeah, like in the summer times, uh, kayaking in the bay is really nice um and just cool to be able to like feel that strength in your arms and then like also be near the water which makes me really happy and uh, same with fishing too like I've learned so much from Christian just about fish habitats and cat he's mo he's mostly catch and release so it's nice because I think I would have had a hard time just like going into sport fishing and bringing every single thing home like it makes me feel good knowing I can release a fish back into the wild and He's taught me to do as little harm as you can catch, do like doing catch and release fishing. Cause obviously like a fish is best if nobody touches it, but it's still fun to be able to go out and we'll have to do like, some fishing and kayaking when you come visit this summer. Yeah. Do some creek yeah. Kayaking. That would be great. You'll have to show me the Pennsylvania way of doing it. Um, yeah. Whatever that means. It's pretty rustic. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. Um, the other question. Oh, what is your favorite wild caught seafood to consume? I was consume? wondering if that was going to be yeah. one of them. Um, ooh, I'm going to not pick salmon just to be different. <laughs> um, outside of that, I'm going to say scallops. They're like okay. so everybody's intimidated by them, it seems, but they're so easy to cook and yeah. they always come out delicious. They are, deli especially the ones I've had from our stores are yeah. really good. Aubrey? I am going to say salmon <laughs> because I'm still getting into the wild seafood world, but like my plan for fishing in February is going to be like, I want to order some shrimp from wild for salmon and then maybe do like some popcorn shrimp, something like that. We we've, um, Christian likes all seafood. I'm just like really new to it all. So we have to like ease into it. Have you, have you eaten so, scallops before? I don't think so. Oh, we'll have like, to unless that. it was at someone's like, event and it was the only food i probably would not have eaten it so delicious maybe i should get some scallops and then courtney has to share recipes with me and do then you, i can learn there's not much to scallops. it They're most important easy. question do you have a cast iron pan no oh we're gonna have to set you up with one of those yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, well that's the other thing like i'm working with i told dustin this the other day I'm oh yeah, with, tell us uh, about this because this this really <laughs> plays into I think uh, what people will well yeah it's already known to people that we're participating in a um, seafood consumption challenge in the month of February. But tell everybody what you're working with over there. Yeah, so uh, Christian and I are working with a convection oven and two small burners, Ooh. and then like of course we have a camping stove if we really need a third. Well, it's a good thing you're Burner. only cooking for the two of you, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, it's really small living because um, it is what it is right now. But like, yeah, we don't have an oven. We have a full size fridge and freezer, which is great because we can store 20 pound cases of salmon in there if we want to, which we have. Um, but other than that, it's like, yeah, it's a convection oven. That's like I could fit it on my lap. Like we like most frozen pizzas, you can't fit in there oh, no. for reference. but the advantage you do have <laughs> over us is if you go out to eat it's probably an easier find for wild caught than beer. yes true. yeah that's super true almost everything on the menu in this town and honestly in a lot of washington is it'll say like alaskan salmon or wild caught something so i do have that advantage but um i think christian and i are really eager to try and learn how to make things on our own rather than just go out. So we're going to be mostly trying things at home, but I'm sure there'll be a night where we're like, we can't, let's not, let's just go. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's just go buy something pre-made. Cool. Well, that's all I've got. Anybody have any final thoughts? I don't think so. I'm excited. Everybody for it, tell us how your first experience was on a podcast. Great. It was more natural than I thought it was going to be. So that's Good. nice. Aubrey. 
Yeah, I agree. More natural. And um, I'm clearly a talker. Like everyone that knows me knows this. So I feel like I'm going to be like, thriving in podcasting because I can, I can I can talk for a straight hour if you need me to we'll but be, I'll we'll be excited when you come it. to visit this spring and can participate in this in person so it'll be fun yeah I I have no idea what I'll talk about I'm excited to take her to the local breweries She's yeah have to test all the local ones and tell us what ones yeah, are good for sure oh man I feel like I like we'll have to yeah we'll have to do a brewery tour and I can try it out. Or are there any craft cideries? Love good cider. One too. at least. Yeah, I think there's one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, we'll add those into. The you can you too. can take us around town and show everybody how snobbish you are about your beer. <laughs> ah, I shouldn't have said anything. I hate. I'm like, I don't want the world to think I'm a snob now. I just like I'm picky, but I try not to be mean about. Well, you're it. not a snob like, when it comes to seafood, clearly. So you've got yeah. that going. For you. I, yeah, I'm, I am so newbie to that. So cool. yeah, it'll be great. All right. Well, thank you both for coming on. Look forward to having you back and uh, look forward to many more episodes of this. And thank you for listening and tune in next week for a new episode. Thanks. <laughs>